So there's a story Jesus tells in the 12th chapter of Luke that I think about every time I come here and vice versa, every time I read this story, I find myself thinking about this water here in our church water fountain. The story goes like this. Someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. But he said, Friend, who set me to be judge or arbitrator over you? And he said to them, Take care, be on your guard against all kinds of greed, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of possession. Then he told them a parable. The land of a rich man produced abundantly. And he thought to himself, What should I do? For I, I have no place to store my crops. Then he said this, I'll do this. I will pull down my barns and build bigger ones, and then I will store up my grain and my goods, and I will say to my soul, Soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this very night your life is being demanded of you, and the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich toward God. He said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, what you will wear, for life is more than food and the body more than clothing. Consider the ravens. They neither sow nor reap. They have nor storehouses nor barn, yet God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? If you then are not able to assess a small thing as that, why do you worry about the rest? So I find myself thinking about this place because this little water feature we have at the church is, is artificial, right? Um, this is uh, something we built here up at the church on the, the garden and the water flows through, there's a drain here and it goes back and gets collected into a holding tank and it just keeps cycling on through. We don't have to keep pumping new water into here. It's pretty much self-contained. Every so often you check and make sure there's not a leak, but it, it runs and pumps all by itself, just recycling the same water. It's meant to flow through. Now, if you could imagine for a moment what would happen if I stop up the drain, say I take a handful of dead leaves or some dirt or, or block it with my hand, well, eventually the water starts filling up. We get more and more and more and more. And, and some part of me might go, look, yeah, I'm, I'm getting more and more water here. I'm hoarding it all in one place. Well, you would obviously know. You'd obviously tell me, right? That's not how this is meant to work. You're, you're abusing. You're, 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 you're breaking what this is meant to do. It's meant to fall down. It's, it's beautiful, and then it flows, and then it goes back, and it cycles all over again. But if you try and clog it up to store up water here in this place, to make yourself a little trough full of water, what, what's the point of that? You're going to end up breaking your waterfall. Its beauty is exactly in its ability to let things flow. It turns out the scriptures have this recurring theme about how our lives are meant to be this kind of flow, where we let things come into our lives and flow through beyond to other people, and then that we're able both to receive and to let go. But something breaks down when we hoard things, when we think the goal of life is to make as big a pile or as big a trough full of water as possible. And you know that it completely misses the point of a waterfall to stop up the drain so that the, wa the waterfall dries up and I've got a big pool of water all sort of collected in one place. You, you know that, and yet we keep playing this game in our lives of thinking that we're more successful or winning at life the more we pile up, the more stuff we hoard for ourselves. It's amazing how over and over and over again the scriptures come back to this idea because we apparently keep needing to learn it, right? It's the story of the ancient Israelites in the wilderness who are given what they need, daily bread, the manna that falls from the sky day by day by day by day. And yet when some people hoard it, when some people try and take more for themselves than they need, or more, I need some for tomorrow or for the next day, it starts to grow worms and grow rotten, right? It's God teaching the people, no, don't hoard things. The point of life is not to get more and more and more for yourself. Take what you need, there will be enough, and then let it flow to other people so that all have enough, right? Or it's our first reading that we're going to hear this coming Sunday as well from this really, really challenging and interesting and provocative reading in uh, the book we sometimes call Ecclesiastes, or in Hebrew, Kohelet. And there's this recurring refrain of everything is vanity, that the writer says, although the, the Hebrew is a little less cynical. 
the original says something close to everything is like a breath, everything is like a vapor, right? It lasts for a moment. It may be a good thing, but it only is there for a moment. So don't try and pour it on to things. You have to let it out, right? It doesn't make any sense at all to try and breathe in, fill your lungs, and then hold on to it forever. Breath only works if you breathe in and breathe out. You let the water flow, it goes to the drain, it comes back up again and flows again. Life only works. It's the way we are meant to be, when we can both receive and then to share out. So the story Jesus tells about this man who thinks the goal of his life is, I've got this abundant, amazing harvest. I know what I'll do. I'll hoard it for myself, and then I'll have money for as long as I need, rather than thinking, wait a second, when you've been given abundance, more than you barns that you already have could possibly hold, Rather than tearing them down and building new, bigger barns, maybe that's a sign you're meant to share with neighbors so everybody can receive good things as well. Something goes wrong when you stop up the drain and you start collecting water in the trough here. It's a sign something's broken, right? In our own lives, though, we live in a culture that treats success like success is when you stop up the drain and start hoarding things for yourselves as though that's what makes you a winner in life. That's what makes you successful. That's what the good life is. But the scriptures keep telling us from the ancient stories of the wilderness wandering through the wisdom of Ecclesiastes to Jesus over and over and over again, that's not how life is meant to be. But rather, we're meant to let good gifts come into our lives. Absolutely, live with open hands there and open hands that can share and pass along the neighbor as well. Because at the end of the day, all you've got is a big hoard of rotten manna. That's not good for anybody. If all you've got is just a trough full of water, but no beauty of the waterfall, what was the point of that? If I die with a big pile of money, but haven't been able to share God's good gifts with other people, I've missed out on what the point is. So often, especially in a culture like ours that seems obsessed with how much stuff we've got and defines winners by who's got a bigger pile, sometimes we make the repeated mistake of loving things and using people rather than loving people and using things. Jesus calls us out again and again and again <clears throat> as one of a long line of voices in the scripture saying the meaning of life isn't about making a big pile but rather in letting things flow. There's something beautiful in receiving and then letting things flow. What if our lives this week could look more like this? And we could maybe unstop the drains in our lives where we've been hoarding things, only looking out for ourselves. That's the conversation this Sunday in our scripture readings. And we invite you to be a part of it. See you then.